Greetings, happy holidays. Uh, today is November 27th. Uh, it is officially what we know as Thanksgiving. Um, yes, it's been a very long time. I've been wanting to do a video blog um, over the last few months. Obviously, my schedule and my energy uh, dictates otherwise, uh, but given today is a holiday, you know, our shop is closed, I have time to basically share with my viewers and people who follow me and who want to hear what I have to say about whatever. Um, it gives me the time to do this, this video blog. Um, and again, I just want to appreciate your viewing. Um, I hope that what I have to say is some benefit and you know, all of our time is valuable. So I want to make sure that what I'm sharing is of value and of good use. Um, lately, uh, there's just been so much, uh, it, so much, Sickness, disease, ill health, um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that's experiencing this firsthand from people that I know, uh, whether it be um, family, friends, people that I know from, you know, the business and otherwise, um, and it's very disheartening. Um, it's very, uh, it definitely is challenging in the sense that, you know, you form relationships with people, um, you know, people can be very close to you, like the closest to you, like say, you know, a spouse or a mate to a family member, like a mother, father, or a sibling, or a distant, even a distant relative, um, and you see something that goes down that doesn't necessarily have to be and yeah, essentially from what I've seen uh, you know basically just looking at all of the dynamics and looking at a big picture view of what's going on uh, it's essentially a war it's a war over our body our mind our spirit our health our vitality and when there's a war on us individually, there's a war on us collectively. There's a war on our family, our relationships, our community. So there's this silent war that's going on. And um, obviously it's on many different levels. I mean, you know, there's people who y you can make a great argument for you know, the war that's happening for our, our spirits. You know, there's a war happening in terms of mass media and entertainment. You know, there's a war uh, happening to us on many, many different levels. Uh, however, you know, in terms of our health and vitality, I don't know if there's a, there's a more significant war than on our everyday well-being on how we feel physically how we feel physically obviously is going to dictate how we feel emotionally how we feel spiritually uh, and otherwise um, so our health is primary um, you know health is wealth and you know all of us who you know, or look, you know, that we need to live in the world, we, we need to make a living, you know, is that, is that in compromise or is that not in compromise with your health and your vitality? Uh, that's a real question that all of us have to answer uh, because, um, you know, one thing I like to say is that you know, where you work is where your soul is, um, you know, because it's very simple. It's like, 
you know, your, your work life is your survival. And that's how you survive. That's how you contribute to the world. That's the service that you do. That's the difference that you make, whether it's in your life or in other people's lives. Um, so, you know, all of these things need to be looked at. But nonetheless, you know, I really wanted to key in on the fact that we are at war. Um, you know, I've gotten news. A few personal friends of mine have come down with cancer. And I mean, you know, these are not people who are chain smokers, um, you know, who live recklessly in terms of their health and vitality. Um, you know, these are people who who are, you know, pretty conscious with making a positive contribution to the community, who's, I can say, who's definitely their work life is not in conflict um, with with their health and vitality and like I said these people are making a difference these are people that have helped me personally with my work and otherwise um, who have um, pro helped promote what I do and have helped me and you know obviously um, I'm doing what I can to to reciprocate um, that what they've done for me so so essentially uh, this is what's disheartening and however you know despite all that you know these people even with even though that they're you can argue that they're relatively healthy that they're doing the right thing and so, and so forth and so on that they still are not immune to cancer. They still are not immune to, you know, life altering surgical procedures, um, which lead to a much lesser quality of life. Um, you know, life can often be not fair. However, you know, we, I've, I believe we just have to do better. We have to know more. We have to consistently challenge ourselves, consistently um, push the envelope and continue to do better, continue to be better. And how can we do this? How can we, in the face of war, in, 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 in this war, we have to accept that we are we are under assault that um, yes the enemy is not pointing a gun right into our window however it is much more lethal is much more dangerous because you don't see it you know it is so ingrained in our culture and our society and it is uh, it is it is it is uh, it's very poetic, it's very ironic that I am doing this on one of the days that feasting is celebrated. I think above anything else, yes, you know, we talk about being gracious, we talk about gratitude and, you know, being, um, you know, you know, today I guess is supposed to represent a day of appreciation of, of, of you know, thanksgiving, giving of oneself and so forth. However, that is that 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 message is celebrated over a meal. And how, you know, it is very beautiful to to come together with loved ones, with family, to celebrate it. But is it really about that? Is it really about um I would say yes and I would say no. You know, and I would say no as strongly as I say yes is because the thing is is that you know, the food and the excessive food and drink, you know, far outweighs, I feel, for a lot of us, um, the, uh, you know, the values that we are celebrating. We're supposed to be celebrating the good values that our culture and our society uh, is looking to promote. However, you know, it's, it's much more about, about, you know, celebrating, you know, just excessive food and drink. Um, and we're not even talking about the kinds of food and drink. We're just talking 
excessive. Um, you know, so so the thing is, is that when we look at um, this war that we're in, we look at uh, the you know the the you know how it impacts our lives um you know we look at you know we look at everything that is set up i mean the culture and the society is set up for us to fail it's set up for us to to uh you know from obamacare to to vaccines to um to cancer surgery, uh, you know, and then everything that leads up to that, diabetes, hypertension, um, you know, all of these things are, are, you know, are good for the economy, are good for the system, for, for everything to continue so that, yes, people benefit on one level, I guess, from, from having you know, a, a job or a service to do, but then at the same time, are we really benefiting? You know, because this is so prevalent in our society, um, one thing that is very disappointing is that, you know, if a lot of us are, you know, I mean, ultimately, you know, you know, we, me, any, anyone, you know, despite what we do, you know, death is certain. And, you know, death should be celebrated in a sense that it gives meaning to life and it makes life that much more valuable. However, uh, I feel that most of us, most if not all of us, you know, can, can we say that we've lived a full life? You know, I mean, where you say, okay, where now you make the decision on when you decide to leave. Just like you can make the decision at night to go to sleep and say, you know, my day is done. Do you do that when your life is over? And maybe, and maybe many people that die do. Uh, but I feel that, from, at least from what I've seen, that that is not the case necessarily. What is the case is that people you know, are scared to die, they're not ready to die, they they want to live, and they fight. And, you know, usually when cancer comes knocking, um, you know, that is often the case. You know, that's why we say, you know, I fought against cancer, you know, really I'm fighting against death. And, you know, what are some of the things that we can do? Now, if we look at cancer, you know, uh, for cancer's sake, um, you know, you know, my approach, you know, I don't claim to be a doctor and I'm really not trying to be, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really just trying to do my best to, to be a public servant in terms of providing the best service, uh, for people to improve their lives. And, you know, oftentimes, uh, it's important for me to understand these things at the basic level, at the most fundamental level. And cancer is no exception. So when I look at cancer, how I look at cancer is, you know, uh, in our in our Western medical world, um, you know, we often look at things, you know, through microscopes. We you know we 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 look at germs. We look at you know, we look at the things um, from a um, a piecemeal kind of way, you know, where, you know, I'm trying to look at things more holistically, more big picture, or a slightly different viewpoint, um, or, or a different lens. Um, you know, cancer, you know, they're going to look at the cell and say, okay, you know, which gives rise, or, or, or which... You know, you know, from that Western mindset, you know, that's how you can argue for the use and the effectiveness or effect or lack thereof of vaccines, you know, because you're looking at cells individually, you're not looking at the body as a whole, 
you know, you're, you're looking at these cells and saying like, well, if I have this cell and I put this cell next to it, then this cell can neutralize that cell. And, and it's very, it's very scientific in its nature, but is it, is it, is it real? Is it, is it effective? Is it something, is it how our bodies really work? And I would argue, not necessarily. Um, but again, I'm not claiming one thing or another. I just have my viewpoint, um, and I feel that it is effective. I feel that it does work, and I've seen evidence of that. Um, so when I look at cancer, I look at cancer, nonetheless, as, as really a symptom of of the of, of of all of of what what the root is of most if not all disease and when we look at the symptom or we look at the root of all disease we have to start with mucus and you know that is the theory you know that is the idea that I've personally adopted you know the idea that mucus is the root of really all disease and you know, one thing I tell people all the time is that this is a blessing. You know, we have mucus, you know, mucus is a good thing, you know. I mean, we eat, we develop mucus. And the thing is, is that some mucus is necessary. You know, when we eat, you know, we can't eat, we shouldn't eat foods or we shouldn't eat only foods that don't develop any mucus at all. And, you know, those few, those foods are, you know, essentially fruit um, and some vegetables that, that, that are mucus free. So one thing to understand and, you know, especially when we look at the, you know, the book, um, Mucolus Diet Healing System uh, by Arnold Eret, written almost 100 years ago, um, you know, he, he was probably the first to really document, at least in our modern day era, uh, the, uh, the role of mucus in the body. So when we look at cancer, what does cancer have to do with mucus? Well, mucus is the beginning of cancer. You know, and we develop mucus over a lifetime. And obviously, you know, with some of us, you know, we may have a area of the body that is, you know, just like, just like, let's say, you know, um, you know, I could be naturally stronger physically in my upper body and you naturally can be stronger physically in your lower body. I mean, it works the same way internally in terms of our internal system. I could have a very strong um, circulatory system in terms of my heart function, but my digestive system or my liver or my some other part of my system, my lung capacity could be weaker and, and vice versa. And, and so all of us are unique and different in terms of that. However, the same principle still applies in terms of mucus in the body and how mucus e evolves. Uh, mucus, you know, takes on a, even a life of its own. And this is what cancer is. Cancer is essentially an evolved and elevated, a, a, a uh, developed, highly developed, organized uh, state of, of mucus. And essentially, so we look at, um, so, so, so that's essentially what it is. You know, mucus developed that, 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 that comes together, forms a tumor, that tumor uh, is almost becomes its own life entity within your body that will feed on you until you die. And, you know, that's essentially, um, you know, my understanding and, and my, um, you know, how I choose to view it. And when we look at it and basically essentially that simplistic, I really try to simplify things and not really make them that difficult um, the approach the approach in terms of understanding it number one you know understanding mucus what it is and how it got to be and then its approach in terms of doing away or healing oneself 
um, has to be the same. Now, now, in terms of um, in terms of um, you know, you know, with that said, you know, and to get back to what we talked about in terms of there's a war, there's a war going on for our everyday health and wellness. Um, we look at cancer, we look at surgery, we look at death. You know, we are definitely living in a culture that promotes disease and painful and premature death. Um, so I ask myself, what is it that little old me can do? All of us have, all of us individually have a power, has an ability to affect change. And um, obviously being in the position that I'm in, you know, the responsibility may be greater and on my shoulders to, to uh, you know, to do more, to be more, to give more. And I accept that. And, you know, this, I'm hoping that this message, this video can, can, can affect as many people or even one person, you know, because it may, it may be the difference in terms of, in terms of, um, your life and, you know, what we have to do because by the time we get cancer, it's not too late, but it is too late. Um, you know, uh, it's not too late because we're still living, we're breathing, and, and, and we could, we could, you know, there's many success stories. But as many success stories that we have, we have many not successful stories. We have many, you know, stories that, you know, things got worse and they never got better. And, um, you know, I've seen it. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just, you know, again, the purpose of this message is to try to inspire, try to encourage, you know, especially with this time of the year, especially on this day. This day, again, a day of, of, of celebrating, feasting. Uh, yes, we're coming together as, you know, with family and loved ones and celebrating that and celebrating giving of thanks. However, you know, it, it, you know, it is definitely, I can even say notor notoriously associated with food and the overconsumption of it. So on this day, we need to, I'm issuing a challenge. Uh, I'm issuing not specifically on this day, but really this time of the year. I talk about all the time and how you see how the holidays are stacked at this time of the year, you know, from from Halloween to Thanksgiving and to Christmas, New Year's. And, you know, you may celebrate Kwanzaa, you may celebrate um, Hanukkah or, you know, but Typically, most people will have some sort of celebra celebratory celebrations, uh, religious or otherwise, at the end of the calendar year. Now, if we look at the end of the calendar year, from a more astrological, spiritual, esoteric level, you know, we see that, obviously, the energy... And when I say energy, I specifically mean our solar energy, you know, which is our governing star of this universe. Solar energy in relation to the Earth is 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 waning. You know, we have basically with the fall, we have the, you know, basically the, you know, the change in the temperature. We have we have the um, we have basically nature going to sleep. So. We see the leaves change, we see them fall, we see the trees withdraw into the soil, 
in terms of the set, we see um, we see food production uh, change dramatically in terms of especially if you're into local produce and local farming what you can do and what you cannot do changes dramatically so all of these changes have an effect on us they have a huge impact on our energy um, our output um, our emotions uh, and otherwise um, so so in terms of how we should be eating and how we should uh, what, should, what how we should be using our energy on a day-to-day -day level should change and it should be in, in, in harmony with that however given again our culture and what and how it celebrates and 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 how it's carried out in terms of you know how we operate on a family level on a community level and on a on, even on a larger level is 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 one of where we over consume food we over consume the wrong food and when we do this year after year it, it certainly has an impact it certainly has an effect mm -hmm. so with december being the month that it is we're on the eve of december december is that month obviously we have the winter solstice which is right you know, which is which falls within the days of the 21st to the 24th. That is the time when you know solstice and sun stand still. So that is the time when the sun, you know, reaches its minimum or reaches its 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 stillness in terms of the days getting shorter. And then from the 25th, it is clear that the, it is the birth of the sun. And so. So that is when the energy now starts to grow so that, you know, it's basically the beginning of the new solar year. It is truly the birth of the sun in the northern hemisphere. Um, so, so quickly in the southern hemisphere, they're actually experiencing now the opposite. They're going into their, into their spring and now they see an awakening of nature and so forth and so on. However, you know, for he, for us here in the northern hemisphere, you know, we we're seeing a quote unquote a symbolic death of nature or a sleep of nature, and so therefore, for us to be, for us to utilize this to our advantage, it is important for us to for our activities, for you know work, how we eat how we play should be in line with nature and that is how we can stand to benefit and uh, from something that may appear to be uh, something that is somewhat detrimental because we don't have access to the things but because of the society you know we have you know electricity we have technology you know it's like we don't miss a beat we don't, you know, in terms of, you know, our ability to get food from essentially around the world, um, whether it be genetically modified or organic or even local, um, you know, we still should, we have to modify and, you know, so that we can benefit uh, from this time. One of the very important things, you know, I touched on cancer and how cancer is, you know, by the time, you know, you're diagnosed with cancer, you know, question is, is it too late? Um, is it too late or is it, is it an opportunity? And, you know, and really that's up to the individual person. I mean, it somewhat has to do with where the cancer is. Obviously, cancer could be way more aggressive in a certain part of the body than others. Um, you know, surgery could very well be a good option. Um, certainly, you never want to go under the knife, but again, once you get to certain states and certain levels of, of sickness and disease, sometimes doing the patchwork surgery surgical procedure is the best option 
even if you want to use uh, or you want to adopt certain lifestyle changes that can mean a difference in the long run this is why I'm making this video today because we have to do better when we are better um, we don't want to wait till the doctor says you have cancer we don't want to wait till you have excruciating pain and you have to go to the hospital you don't want to wait until it is essentially becomes a crisis situation um, you know we want we want we need to just like with anything in life um, we have to be proactive about things that we want to make a difference with you, um, obviously you know this video is not targeted or it's not aimed at or it's not uh, certainly we can we can uh, this message I want to not discriminate against the people who do have cancer and who, and who are in trouble so to speak however it's, it's really a video for all of us especially for those because obviously pain is is a hell of a motivator you know life is a is a is a dance between pain and pleasure and today you know represents obviously that pleasure day on all levels you know we have pleasure with friends and family and loved ones and obviously we have pleasure with the over consumption consumption of food and drink and and obviously this whole season from Halloween on you know where where Halloween was really should represent harvest and celebration of the summer months and you know, harvesting that energy so that we could make it through the winter. No, it's become trick or treat and dressing up in costumes and, you know, eating candy <laughs> of all foods or not foods um, to Thanksgiving, where, yes, okay, it's getting more positive in terms of the thank, you know, giving thanks and all of that. However, you know, it, it, it it's become a a a a a celebration of sorts of being gluttonous and celebrating that. Um, certainly, not all people are doing that, but but it's easy for that to happen. Um, then, too, right after that, um, you know, the whole Christmas, New Year's, or the end of the holiday, the end of the calendar year. You know, so, so, you know, and, and, and it's hard to escape because, you know, whether it's at your job, with the office parties, end of the year, you know, to your home, and, you know, you got all of the, again, it's like Thanksgiving part two in terms of the meals, and then you have the New Year's energy in terms of the, all of the celebration and the bright lights and the this and the that, um, you know, spiritually you know because of the you know um, you know our two dominant stars you know in, in 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 our sky you know one being the sun one being the moon is the is the true yin and yang you know of 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 who we are and what they represent the sun and the moon you know so with the summer solstice and the whole summer months, obviously the sun and that whole energy, that outward expression, that 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 yang expression, that 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 male expression of 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 all of us is dominant. With the winter solstice approaching, that lunar, that that dark. Um, internal energy that more uh, subconscious uh, yin energy is more dominant uh, during the winter solstice itself is when we're actually at our most receptive state of the year uh, it is a time to definitely go within go within oneself 
it is definitely not a time to be outwardly uh, or being outwardly expressive and outwardly in terms of the use of our energy. You know, so so for example, you know, I mentioned parties and things of that nature. It's not a time to be really uh, indulging, whether it's food, drink, uh, socially. It's really a time to really be going within. It's really a time to be uh, in, to 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 be writing the scripts that you want to see happen in an outwardly expression for the next year. Uh, so this is the this is the sowing of seeds time. And with sowing of seeds, it begins in darkness. You know, you put a seed in the ground where there's no light. And this is that time of the year. This is the time of the year to to be thinking about, to be visualizing all of the things that you want to see happen with the next year and, and as the energy go, grows the solar energy becomes more dominant our energy in an outward way in a way that we can we can you know uh, do in, in, in terms of creating the physical reality that is assisting us that, that energy and we have to be in line with that and when we're out of line when we're, we're partying and over socializing and and overeating and over drinking during this time of the year it, 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 it sets the stage for a culture of disease and premature death so this challenge this video the purpose of this video is to really one address the war the silent war that's going on that's been affecting people close to me that's been has been affecting our our culture and our society uh this war um you know, one of the things you know like 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 my 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 answer or my my retaliation or my move against this war is to offer a challenge i'm challenge all of you who have made it this is the 37th minute if you sat here for the 37 minutes thus far of this video and watch this video I'm certainly challenging you to to do better while you are better to and and what are some of the things that you can do um, well I can tell you what I'm gonna do um, uh, Obviously, with the winter, the I, I discussed the winter solstice. You know, this is uh, this is the year time of the year where the yin or that moon lunar energy is dominant. The solar energy is recessive, uh, so our subconscious energy is more dominant. Um, um, you know, this is the time of the year to definitely be going within to be visualizing to be setting the goals and the plans that you want to see happen in 2015. So one of the most powerful ways to do that is obviously through fasting. Um, so I plan to undergo a 21 day uh, liquid fresh juice fast. Now, what does that mean exactly? Um, well, I I'm of years years of fasting and 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 fasting and and seeing others fast. I personally feel that you know using fresh juices is the most effective way to fast. Um, certainly, there's different fasts. You can do water only. You can do even the kinds of water you drink. You know, from coconut water to spring water to distilled water makes a huge difference. Um, so, you know, to each his own. I think as long as you're fasting, you're doing something different than what you're doing on an everyday level, that is going to make a difference. Even if you just eat less, that will make a difference. Um, however, what I plan to do 
is at least 21 days, 21 days of uh, fresh juices. And that also includes, uh, I'm going to be doing some fresh almond milks. I'll probably be doing, um, you know, we now are doing uh, sea moss. Um, I'll probably be doing some sea moss drinks. So I'm going to be getting nourished, obviously, but just in a liquid form. And what I've found is that, yes, it's not as aggressive or maybe not even as some people would argue that water fasting is is more is more um, effective and more it's certainly more aggressive uh, because the less nutrition that your body gets uh, in terms of vitamins and minerals and nutrients, the more your body is going to detox. Now, because I've been doing this for years and years, uh, for someone like myself. Um, one thing that is important to understand is that for me it is definitely more maintenance and you know maintenance is critical for any vehicle you know you can ask your car mechanic that question and the car maintenance that you do or don't do is going to make the difference in the life of that vehicle so making that analogy with the human body it is definitely no different if you have been if you have been eating a raw food diet or a high raw food diet and you and you fast periodically through the year or even um, you know whether it's the seasons or every month or even every week then you know this is amazing so once a year I do an extended fast and this time of the year I do it essentially because I'm looking to be in tune with nature I'm looking to be in tune with our solar system which affects us uh, again we're unless you are an astrologer or even an astronomer or someone that is interested in that um, you know these are some of the things that most of us don't pay attention to unfortunately uh, because they're not necessarily connected with our day-to-day -day survival um, it doesn't undermine the importance of these things. These things are definitely influential uh, whether we're conscious of it or not. So so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be doing at least 21 days. Um, I find that actually over the last few weeks my appetite has already been waning. Um, I'm starting to lose interest in food. Uh, I don't enjoy it as much um, in terms of the flavors and the complexities of the textures and and that is a good thing um, our body is supposed to you know when you find that food becomes not as stimulating or not as enjoyable your body is probably telling you it's time to take a break from it it's time to fast uh, it's going to be there and our body essentially needs or it wants to have that break um, again, like I said, even on a, no matter what you eat, or unless you're eating a high fruit diet, which I don't recommend, uh, for all you, you know, pro fruitarians out there, um, uh, there are some exceptions to that, but however, for most of us, a high fruit diet is not recommended, um, because you know developing or creating some mucus in the body is useful and is needed it's because we over consume food and we over consume the wrong foods too much mucus is developed and when too much mucus is developed over years and years and decades then the body has to create tumors it has to create diabetes and hypertension it has to create uh, uh, these di di disease conditions uh, to offset uh, the over evolvement of mucus in the body. And so essentially what fasting does is it, it, it really allows the mucus, it really will, it, 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 it you know, f and physically in the body, what it does more than anything is allow the mucus to be to essentially be cleaned. Uh, where does the mucus largely located? 
mainly in our lymph. So our lymph has the job, the huge job of cleaning our blood. So everything we eat obviously has to be transformed into the bloodstream so that the bloodstream travels and it basically gives every part of the body what it needs. Now if you're eating a lot of um, uh, starchy foods, bready um, pastas and, and, and those kinds of foods, these kinds of foods are probably some of the worst foods that anyone can eat no matter what your diet is and and because these things have no moisture they have no water and it's very difficult for the blood the you know the, these things stay in the blood and you know when you have people that have that puffy like appearance whether it's in their face or anywhere in their body that's basically just just starch just settling in parts of the body and so obviously this is a very bad thing this is not a, a, a healthy thing at all. And so, but even for most of us, or let's say, um, for someone like myself who's been eating a raw food diet for a long time, um, it'll be 15 years uh, coming up. Um, I definitely develop mucus is it, is there's no and and that's a good thing um you know you know i eat a good share of avocado nuts seeds um i do eat uh some what i call starch from nature so whether it be banana uh plantain uh even some of your starchy vegetables like um you know, you got your broccoli and cauliflower, and you have things like um, uh, what else did I eat? Um, you can say um, even quinoa to a certain level extent, or wild rice. Um, those are some of the grains. The the sprouted buckwheat we use. Those are essentially the three seed like grains that I eat those things create mucus and like I said you know mucus is not an evil it's not a curse it's not a it's a blessing that nature has given us to protect our immune to protect our digestive system digestive lining develops mucus but when we eat starch when we eat dairy and we eat things that don't that are not in line with our constitution a high level of mucus is developed and so these times of the year, you know, this is why this is the flu season. The flu season, again, is essentially the body creating and developing mucus. So we're at minute, we're at minute 48. I'm going to keep this, this video under 60 minutes. Uh, thank you thus far for giving me 48, 49 minutes of your time thus far. And uh, I want to just wrap this up by saying that... Um, I am issuing a challenge and really the challenge is you know you can do what I do if you have questions and you have you want to get ideas and things of that nature you know you can uh, look to my website you can uh, follow me on social media and you can ask questions you can post questions and comments uh, on this video um, and I will try my best to be a support and a guide for those looking for it. Um, yes, so essentially, uh, do better because if we do better when we are better, then that can only be better. So that's me, the poet, trying to give you something you know, uh, that you can take with you not only into this season, but really it set the stage and it set the platform for your upcoming year because, you know, you want to be, I guess we all want to be successful, or at least I would hope that we all want success on different level, but on multiple levels, but 
you know, we have to be, in order to enjoy any success, you know, we should, we should aim to be uh, healthy. That should be our, at the top or somewhere near, near the top of anybody's go, uh, uh, goals uh, is, is for, for, for a healthy body, for disease-free, for, you know, I mean, essentially, it goes without saying. So health comes with proper nutrition, obviously, exercise, um, you know, all of these things are paramount. And when we look at health and we look at nutrition, fasting uh, is not as promoted, I think, as it should be. Um, when we look at the different centers that have had success with treating cancer, at least from a natural angle, um, you know, they're definitely huge, a huge proponents of fasting, you know, and even if they're using things like wheatgrass or spring water, I mean, it's all good. Um, no matter what you use, by not bringing in certain foods, especially if they have a certain level in terms of it being able to develop mucus and things that are very harmful to the body, short term and long term, and then bringing in things that's going to allow for the elimination of mucus, then that's a good thing. So this time of the year, uh, again, I'm doing at least 21 days. Uh, I'm gonna somewhat. I'm gonna start somewhere around the first week of December and go right into the winter solstice and finish up somewhere around there. Um, so that's my plan. You can share with me your plan. Um, at the very least, you should definitely, if you want to do a fast for the month of December, at the very least, it should be during the week of the 21st into the 24th you know at that at that that week in particular you know you know from a from a spiritual uh um uh, solar psychic level you know we're 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 more receptive than any other time of the year. So, so that's a powerful thing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm curious and I'm, I'm interested in what people will, are going to do. And uh, I just encourage you to, again, do better when you are better so it can be better. Thank you.